Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky. In this video, we're going to be learning how to create a login user interface screen in Adobe Photoshop. So let's get started. So we're now in Photoshop, and we're gonna start by going up to File, New, where it says Document Type. We're going to go to Mobile App Design because there's some presets here that we can use that are quite handy. So you can see here, there's a lot of different presets. And if you go up to iPhone 6 Plus, we'll pick that one for this example. It gives us a size, resolution of 72, and you can click OK. If it puts it into an artboard automatically, you can get rid of that by just dragging this layer above the artboard and then just deleting the artboard folder itself. And I'm just going to fill this background with white and then just give that the label background and then lock that layer. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a background color. So if we select the rectangle tool and drag our rectangle, we can just fill it with any color for now and just make sure it snaps into the corners like so. And then we'll just lock that for the time being. Now next, we're going to get our text tool and we're going to type username in capital letters. Let's just zoom in a bit, make that a bit bigger. There we go. And I'm going to duplicate this. That's Command J on the Mac, Control J on the PC, and I'm going to call it password. Now I'm going to select the line tool and we're just going to drag, holding shift to make sure the line is straight and just make sure I create a perfectly horizontal line. And actually we want this to be two pixels rather than one. So if you just go to edit, free transform and just drag that up so it spans two pixels. Now we want this to be an equal width from the left hand side to the right hand side. So if we just drag this over to the right and then using the direct selection tool, just select these two anchor points on the left and drag those to the left. And now what we're gonna do is hold shift and using the arrow keys, just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then we're gonna do the same on the right. So just select these two anchor points and then tap them 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we can see it's equally spaced from the left side and the right side. Now let's just make sure our text is left aligned on both of them. And we'll select them both and just click up here just so they line up in line with each other. So now I'm happy with this line, I'm just going to duplicate this. I'll call it line in the layers palette actually. We can just duplicate that. And holding shift and using the arrow keys, just knock that down. So these are going to be our two password. Well, uh, these are going to be a so these are going to be our two fields, username and password. Now we're going to need a button as well, so something that they can actually click to log in. So if we select the rectangle tool, and we'll draw our button. We can just make it any color for now. And we're gonna select our password text. We'll duplicate that layer. Make sure we drag this above the button layer. And we're gonna call this login. We'll make this text a bit bigger as well. And we can centrally align this. And then if we select this login text and our button itself, we can then snap these so it sits centrally in the middle of the button. And do the same as well vertically. Now we also want our button to be the same distance in from the edge. Same as before, we can select the button itself. And then with the direct selection tool, just drag over these anchor points. We'll drag them right out to the very edge and then tap, holding shift and using the arrow keys, tap 10 times and we know that it's gonna be exactly in line 
Another way of doing this, of course, is to measure everything out before you start and create guides. But this is just one way that I find quite easy to do it. It's just using the arrow keys. You can just count how many times you press the arrow keys. And it just keeps everything nice and in line, very tidy, which is generally just a good thing to do when you're designing. And I'm actually going to round off the corners on these buttons. Uh, and I'm actually going to round off the corners on this button. So if I just select the button layer itself, I'm actually going to call that button just to save any confusion. And in the properties palette, I can then round off these corners. There we go, perfect. And I'm just going to add a logo as well. This will obviously be whatever logo you've got to use. But as I don't have a logo for this tutorial, I'm just going to add this one in here. Lovely. So before we get onto color, I just want to add some icons here, something that represents username and password. So we could go over here and go to the custom shape tool, click this drop down, and if you go to the little cog icon, you can then go all, click append, and it will give you access to all of the shapes in the library. So now we can look through and see if there's something that we can use to represent username and password. Okay, it's a little bit different, but for the username, I think I'm gonna, gonna use a hand. It's a bit unconventional, but what the heck, it's a tutorial. So let's go with a hand for that. And for password, I think a padlock. Padlock, something like that's pretty standard. Although I don't actually remember seeing a padlock in here, so we may have to draw our own. So, if we select the ellipse tool and holding shift, we just draw a circle. And then with the direct selection tool, we'll just delete this bottom anchor point. So we're left with a semicircle. And then the options up here, we can get rid of the fill. And then the stroke will have that as white. Leave it set to five points, that's fine. And then with the rectangle tool, we'll draw the body of our padlock as well. There we go. So that's the top part. So we can go to edit, free transform, and holding shift, we can bring this down a little bit. And notice that it will still remember the width of five points up here. And we can select both of these and then click this just to center them. So if they're off center, you can just select both parts of the shape and then click this and it will put them centrally to one another. Now we're just going to draw the inside part of the padlock. So for this, we don't want an outline. We would like a fill of white with no outline. And then the same again for the top part of the keyhole. So we've got the circle tool. We're holding shift to create a perfect circle. And then we can just zoom in and just refine this keyhole as necessary. And once we're happy, we can select all parts of the shape and just centrally align all of them. Now with our hand, I think we're going to turn that into an outline as well, just so the two match. So with our hand layer selected, we can select the path selection tool, click so it's selected, and then just get rid of the fill. And we'll change the outline to white.
and then click here. And we can change a few stroke options. So we'd like to align it to the outside as is, but just to get rid of that big spike, let's just select rounded corners here. And it just rounds off that corner so it doesn't have that point in the way. Excellent. Let's just make that a touch bigger. Okay, brilliant. So we've got our two shapes. Now one thing you can do is you can select all of the parts of this padlock and go up to layer and group layers and save this as padlock, then duplicate that layer and then just hide this bottom one. So what we're going to do now is right click the padlock copy and convert to a smart object. So this is now one object, but if we did need to go back and edit the padlock or the width of the strokes or anything, we have this layer here. So we have this padlock folder with all the different parts in. So it's generally quite good to do that until you're totally set on the design, it's finished, you're happy with, in this case, the padlock, and then you can convert it. And you, it's usually good to do that because you can just leave it switched off and you've got it if you need it. So now we've got the padlock layer as one and the hand. Let's just drag these to the right a bit. And then we can select them both along with one of these lines and then left align them. So now they line up. Now I'm just going to select both of them and actually make them a bit smaller. So go to edit, free transform and holding shift, just bring them down in size. Uh, this is something you'll notice now because we this was a pre-created shape and this is one we created separately. As we're scaling both of these down, our finished shape that is now one element is scaling down so the stroke will stay proportionate to the rest of the shape but this one here is still a vector shape so this is remembering the stroke width so let's change that to hand so we can select our path tool and we can go and manually change the width to match the padlock that's just something to remember if you're resizing it Okay, so let's just line these up with the text now. Make that a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna change the font as well. Make that Helvetica light instead. And actually I'm gonna change that to lowercase. Just bring those a bit closer to the icon. Okay. All right, so we're nearly ready to do the color now. Let's just move this down a little bit. So now we're just gonna add some color to finish it off. It doesn't look absolutely awful like this does. So I'm gonna double click my background layer here, or my background color layer, I should say. And I'm gonna select a really nice shade of blue. Lovely. And then we've got our line layers here. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to eye drop the blue color and then just make it darker. Something like that. And I can copy this hex value here. Double click the other line and then just paste it in. So now they're both the same color. For our icons, I'm going to select that and just drop the opacity down to 30. And keep the username and password at 100%. Let's maybe make those 40 instead. Just so they're visible, but not as visible as the username and password for this design. And then our login button. Let's change the color of that as well. So we're going to have a blue, but it's going to be a much darker blue. There we go, perfect. 
And one last thing I'm going to do for the background is just give it a bit of a gradient. So you could do this with the gradient tool, you could do it with the blending options, but I'm going to do it manually. And just create another layer. I'm going to select the foreground color, sample the blue, and then just pick a much lighter shade of that. And then selecting the brush tool, with a nice feathered brush, no hardness, but a good bit of size on it. I'm going to just bring this up here. These are the square brackets, by the way. The left square bracket brings the size of the brush down. The right square bracket brings the size up. Very handy shortcut to know. And right in the middle of the canvas, I'm just going to click once. And you'll see there, it just gives it a little bit of depth with that gradient. Just highlights that center part of the page. And there we go, we've created a login user interface in Adobe Photoshop. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Take care.